welcome to week four of the Chinese painting series. I hope you're having fun so far. If this is your first time, welcome. Um, this is um, a class with um, roots with a traditional freestyle Chinese painting. A little more modern, but getting some concepts down here. First thing I want to um, announce is I kind of was absent-minded when I made the schedule. And I realize next week is the Super Bowl, and probably a lot of you are going to be having some fun partying and watching the Super Bowl. So next week, we are going to skip the class, and we're going to resume February 9th, okay? So the next class will be February 9th. I'll put a reminder up on the group and stuff. So that's the only main announcement. Okay, so supplies for today, again, two waters, one for your black ink, one for your um, washing or washing your brushes and one to add water. Um, when you wash your brushes with the black ink, it really makes the water like jet black and it kind of meddles in with everything. So of course, because I'm saying this, we're going to have traditional Chinese ink for today. Again, so take out your ink. If you do not have ink, use black watercolors. And the watercolors, if you got the Chinese set we are using today, is 55, which is like um, aqua kind of a color, 25, which is a bright yellow, 52, which is a red. I tried using 54 with this um, painting, but this is a more watery. I'm finding out these uh, watercolors I got, they have different consistencies, which is interesting. But this one I really like, so I'm picking 52. But there is other colors in here. Um, there's different shades of red. There's a 19 and a 54. You can use, this one's more of an orange. You don't have to stick with the 52, but this is the one I liked. And then we have our white with this 50. And we have our brushes here. I'm probably going to stick with just the smaller one because of the size of you can see the size of what I'm working on. Um, it'd be easier to see in the camera and it, uh, if, uh, it'd be easier to use with the small brush. But if this is large, you might be one to grab more larger brushes. It really doesn't matter. They're just different sizes of what you want. Okay? And some kind of rag or paper towel. And, and two palettes. So I just have styrofoam. I want a palette for my colors and a palette for my ink because it's very runny and it's like has a life of its own and I don't want it to run into my colors. All right, so we are going to paint a little paint in here, a peonies, which is, um, and also some small daisies to get you used to other flowers and, and um, floral stuff. I know we did like cherry blossoms and I forget what else we did. We did some floral ones before floral stuff. But this is another flower. Okay, so first I want you to do, I'm just getting my brush shut up and getting it shaped here. First I want you to do is on your palette, I want you to squeeze some white. Now this is used, but you can reuse your palette. And actually, this color, which is probably the 54, if you let it dry, you can reuse it. But you're going to want to add, uh, it's a lot, but still white. And not too much of the red. You want uh, two dots of that size. One you're going to mix, and one you're going to leave um, on the side here. I'm just going to put two just so I know because I was using different reds. I want to make sure I use the same red. Some of them look the same when they're on the palette dry. So I am going to make a light pink with the white. I don't want to grab too much of the red because it's very overpowering and you can always add more to the um, white if you can't, you know, take away. You can always add more. So just take the tip of your brush and just take a little, I don't know if you can see it, it's just a dab, and just next, I don't even know if I got any there. There we go. 
See, that looks just a little bit, and it, it goes a long way, but I'm still going to take more. I'm saying you can always, that's a lot, you always want to, um, you can always add more. Gonna take some. All right, that's probably about what I want. A light pink. So, like that. Now I'm going to put this aside. Well, I'm actually going to leave it here because I'm going to show you how to load the brush. But I am going to clean the brush out. Actually, before I load the brush, I'm going to show you the movement because it's going to be easier to show you without the paint on right now. So what we're going to do, this is a different brush stroke. We are going to almost do like a fan in motion, like a fan. You're going to keep your brush, the tip on the same focal point or point, and you're going to kind of fan your brush around, but the tip's going to kind of stay. So you're turning it. Okay. That's the motion I'm doing when I make this um, paint stroke. So first I'm going to load it up on the pink. Okay, and then I'm going to take ever so small, even smaller when we add on here, of red on the very tip. So I'm going to just barely, that might even be much, too much, barely on the tip right here. So you have pink on the top and then red on the tip. All right. So we're going to make three petals in a row with this fan emotion. So I'm going to just pick any, um, you could just put the flowers. I kind of try to visualize where I'm going to put my flowers, but, and we're going to keep the tip here and we're going to fan. Okay. So you should have like a little red here and pink on the top and you might have to dip a little bit again on the red, but a couple times. Okay. I think I'm going to have to, now that I see the pink, I might want to get a darker pink here. But you should have three petals i don't know it's kind of hard to see let me you know i'm gonna just for the sake of this i'm gonna make it a little darker pink because it looks like it's hard to see here i mean it looks fine here but i think i'm looking through the camera and it doesn't look like it's kind of faded See if this pink will show up better. I think I made the pink too light. So I want you to be able to see this stuff. Okay, so I'm gonna load up again with the pink. And I'm going to again load up with the pink. Need to add a little water. And then dip just ever so slightly in the red. Now we're going to actually go around the three petals here. So I'm going to go like make like a wreath around almost. I might turn the paper because it might be easier. And the red is supposed to, the darker color is supposed to go towards the inner flower and the lighter, the lighter pink is going to come out. And I'm going to do the same motion. You could probably see that better with the pink the contrast fan motion and you might have to load up your tip again okay and then on the top since these are kind of in the middle you might not have to load your brush so much because they're kind of um these are like in sticking out in the middle and this is like behind but just do a fan motion around Okay. 
Okay, there's one. And again, if you have questions, just comment, whatever. I'm kind of looking on the camera. So I'm going to do this, uh, probably like a couple more flowers, the same thing. So load in your brush with pink. And a, just a slate. You don't want to put too much red or just like saturate everything. And kind of like looking at it visually, I'm like thinking where I want to put the flowers to make it flow. So I might want to put one here. Again, the tip fan. Fan. Okay, just the three petals. I'm going to go all the way around again. This is kind of repetitive. I'm trying to see. Look at the camera. Make sure you can see everything. This reminds me of a technique. I think, I think it's um. There's a person. I think it was in the '90s called Donna Dewberry. She did a, like a lot of flowers, where she loaded um, two um, colors of paint. She was very popular. I don't hear much of her anymore. But this is kind of, you ever heard of her? This is kind of reminds me of the technique, sort of, that we're using here. I'm just going all the way around. Okay. And maybe I'll put one here. This is the same method again. And if you need, if your paint seems a little sticky or something, you could just add just a tad water. Sometimes you just need a little water in it. I'm loading my brush right now. Um, maybe one here. Oh, I need more red on my tip. and just turn around this be easier I'm just gonna go all the way around and you don't feel I mean you have to re tip your um, brush in the red that's fine it's just the top I'm sort of fanning it and or, or, or kind of pushing it over. Okay, and let's stick one up here. I think that would be good. You can put as many as you want. Okay. So I'm just loading again with the pink. And then ever so slightly dip in the red on the tip. Uh, what was I going to say? I was going to put it here. Yeah, let's do it over here. And see how there's like dual colors? I don't the glare. I'm trying to show you. I think there's a little glare there for you. So I'm doing three petals and then going around the three petals. That's all I'm doing. So three and then going the right around. Too much red. Add a little more pink. And I like the top ones a little less red because they're kind of hiding behind. All right, so we got our base flowers here. I'm going to let that dry. I'm going to add the stems while that dries because when we put the center, we don't want it to bleed everywhere. So we're going to grab our ink or our black watercolor. If you have Chinese ink, get another palette because this is very runny. You don't want it to run into your colors. 
It's just a different kind of texture. And you want to shake it. All right. And this is a little twisty top just to twist it off. I'm just going to put... See, it's like almost like water. <laughs> it really is runny. So I don't want jet... I do want jet black for the stems. Yeah, I do. So I'm going to use straight ink. So again, I'm going to make sure my brush is clean and reshaped to the tip. Again, you want to remember how to hold it. Two fingers, thumb for a lot of the fluid movements. So I'm just putting um, a little bit on the tip here. And I'm using my whole arm movement. And I'm going to just throw some stems in. I'm not going to go all the way down because I'm going to put some rocks here. Oh, needs a little bit. They have that guy going down. Okay, just simple stems. Now for the leaves, you don't want, I don't want this dark. So what I'm going to do, and this is why you have the second water that doesn't have all the yucky um, ink and paint on. I'm going to take this brush. I'm going to just put water here. Sorry. Just like a pile of water. I'm going to take a little bit of ink and add it to it. And it'll make like a gray. It won't be so... Um, domineering or overpowering. Alright. So I'm going to throw some leaves in here. And I want to cover up the space. So it's just a stroke. Like that. And if it's too light you can add more ink. But we're going to add some detail on this. So it's kind of like a stroke, um, like a half circle and another one. Maybe add a little more. I'm filling up the space here. And that actually will dry. It looks dark, but that will dry a little lighter. And, you might, and it's okay to have different shades because different values make it um, more interesting and shows depth. I'm just throw on some leaves. And it's going to look watery until it dries. It's fine. It's going to run in there. That's why I'm doing this in stages, so it does get watery at first. And the black ink actually dries fairly quickly. It doesn't look much now because we're not, we don't have any detail yet. But we're just covering up the empty space here. Maybe I'll throw one more up here. All right. Now we're going to just add some rocks here to give it some kind of um, place where it's at. So I'm going to use um, the straight black in this. And I'm just going to make like half circles, but not like really smooth. I'm going to make them a little bumpy because rocks aren't all smooth. So I might just throw like a rock here. Maybe a little baby rocks. Just let it flow. Your ink should flow right off your brush here. I don't even might want to like touch the ground. I'm going to leave some space here because I'm going to put some flowers. Okay. So then I'm going to add um stems or like grass i'm going to just put like field daisies in here or like you know those um daisies are almost like 
roadside weeds or whatever. So I'm just going to take some simple strokes and just let it go naturally. I'm using my whole arm movement here, which is critical or that's kind of like the foundation of a Chinese painting is using your whole arm movement. You might want to throw some here. Maybe one there. Alright, so you should have something like this. See if I can show you better. If I do on the side here, just see better. Alright, I'm gonna add some flower outlines. This is still this is almost dry to paint, but not quite. So I'm reshaping my brush. I want it pointy. And I'm using straight black ink again. I'm going to get back to my layer, lighter ink later. And this one you are going to use a little more to rest, but you kind of want to get your whole arm in. But I'm going to just make just like four circles. Or you can make more of a petal shape. I'm not going to read real detail. I'm just trying to make this simple. You can add more um, petals if you like. Like this one maybe. I can add another one. I'm just going to kind of put them around here. Not every blade of grass is going to get a flower either. Uh, I think we should use one more. How about... You get used to, like, you know, look at your work, stand back and go, well, that looks empty there. Maybe I'll put a flower there. And keep looking at where you want to put stuff. Maybe I'll put a little guy here. Just look in here. I feel like I want one here, so I'm going to actually... Quick draw a little stem. I'm just doing like kind of like um, impressions of leaves or petals. Okay, so now we're going to go back to the peonies and get some more detail in here. So I'm going to grab my 55, it's just like an aqua color. I'm going to put some center color in here. So you're going to want your, some kind of like blue green, just a dot. You really don't need much. I mean, so it, it goes a long way. We're not using a lot. And then we're going to use, uh, what number is it? 25, which is just a bright yellow. So if you have regular watercolors, um, just like a bright yellow or like a blue green or anything you really want. Again, with the yellow, just a dot. I'm just squeezing that dot in here. And we're just going to add some color in the center. So first we're going to grab, I'm going to add a little water here. I'm going to just add a little of the blue green. I'm just going to do a little white here. I'm just going to add just a little, kind of like a dot in the center here. Hey, Marilyn. Hey, Kaylee. I didn't, I'm too busy uh, having fun here. <laughs> Again, if you have questions, let me know. All right, so you're just putting a simple blue dot in the middle. I'm going to let that dry a little bit before because we're going to put yellow around it and I don't want it to blend. So I'm going to add details now to these leaves that look very flat. <laughs> so we're going to go back with this straight black. Oops. Just a tip and we're just going to add a little detail on the leaves. It's just like, uh, it doesn't have to be anything big. It's a simple line. Just let it flow. If it, 
if it runs a little, sometimes the, the um, when things run in watercolor, actually it makes it look kind of cool. So just don't worry about it and just have fun. This looks like it's behind the stem, so I'm going to make it look like... You might have to reshape your brush. You might have to do that in a minute. So it's starting to run a little bit. I might want to wait on that, but it kind of looks cool. It kind of looks like it's fading in the back. I'm just doing simple strokes. And maybe in the back, you might want some faded or not any detail at all. You just have to look at your artwork and decide that what looks good and what you want on there and what you don't. This is more of a freestyle impressionism. I mean, it's more suggestive than being really, really de 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 detailed, detailed. There's some, you know, Chinese, it's not freestyle, but there's some Chinese um, artwork that is so particular and everything's like perfect. This is more freestyle. I like the fact that this is fading a little bit because it looks like it's in the back. All right. All right, so we got some detail in the leaves. Now we're going to add some yellow, give it more color. So you might want to add just a tad water just to get it to flow. And we're gonna put the center in the daisies here. A little piece of there. And same thing as this, you're just putting some color, just a dot. If for some reason you can't see it, I this is working out for me, but sometimes yellow is so opaque that you just can't see it. Just add a little white, depending on your watercolor. Sometimes I add, um, yellow on something it just you just can't see it just add a tad of white and it'll it'll pop a lot more make it more opaque and then i mean i'm sorry usually the uh, yellow can be transparent you want to make it opaque if you need to by adding white okay so you just add just dabs of color now with this one Honestly, I probably, because I didn't use the space up here, I probably would cut this off. But if you wanted to add more, you can always add more up here. All right, and I'm going to take the yellow and just put some yellow around this blue dot. Just grabbing some paint here. This one might be harder to see, but I don't really want, I don't need a lot of, I just want a hint of yellow anyway. I'd rather have the bright yellow on the daisies. But I'm just sort of dabbing it around. This one has some white I missed or left, so I'm gonna just add some yellow there and make it pop. Okay, now we're going to add a little detail on the ground here. So I'm going to give some sense there's some kind of ground. So I'm going to go back to my ink that I watered down that's not completely saturated with um, black. It's got water. I'm just going to do some strokes in the back. Now if this is dry, this won't like i hear some water well that if it's dry it will not smear <laughs> but i'm actually going to put something there so it doesn't matter but if this is completely dry you can paint right over it like that is completely dry and it won't smear that was i guess this leaf this um little splate of grass was a little wet i'm just gonna give some Impressions of ground. 
maybe even down here, make it complete. And the same color, or uh, same gray, black ink. I might want to shade some rocks. I want to think about where is the light coming from. So if the light's coming from here or here or where I want my shadows. Uh, so if the light's coming from here, maybe uh, I could put some little shadows in the bottom here. And right behind the rock. I'm using too much of my wrist. I gotta move my arm. Maybe more shadows down here. I still get in the habit of using my wrist a lot, but if you try, try using your whole arm. I'm just so used to my normal watercolor painting. All right. I'm mixing out my brush. All right, so you should have something that looks like this. Honestly, if you have, um, I would either cut this because I didn't want to like spend like hour, you know, a lot more time just watching paint the same thing over and over. But I would fill this space in with flowers, or you could just cut it off here. But you would have this is what you will have something like this. So give it a try. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, again, don't worry about mistakes. Just have fun with it. If it runs a little bit, sometimes that actually makes a painting, honestly. And so I will um, do an up uh, notification probably this weekend. I am not doing next week because of the Super Bowl. I'm sure a lot of you are going to be watching the Super Bowl. But we will do our next class February 9th. I think it's 9th and two Sundays from now. So I'll set a reminder. I think we're going to be doing fruits and vegetables with uh, these Chinese paints. So... Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you had a wonderful weekend and that uh, you relax enough and you have a wonderful week and I'll see you in two weeks. I mean, I'll be posting the group, but the video here, I'll see you in two weeks. All right, have a great week.